Cool. Can everyone hear okay and see okay? It's all working. Mm -hmm. Okay, good stuff. Yes. So um this was actually really I know this was quite organic and it wasn't planned, but it, it turned out pretty good from a production standpoint. Um it's almost exactly what we would do in the studio. So like we'd be shooting shit and like coming up with ideas and stuff. Someone would suggest something, we get a little sketch of it. Uh people organically gravitate to something and like that usually shows that it's a good idea or a good design. Um and then we do like iterations of it. So um if this was an actual, you know, uh, asset that was going to go into a game, um, depending on the size of the studio, you might do anywhere between five up to like 300 iterations of the same thing. And also depending on like whether it's an NPC or whether it's the main character or whatever it is. Um, even in, in, in these studios that I've worked in in the past, uh, main characters would still go through like a full iteration um, at least... 15 times before the final was made and by full i mean like uh 2d concepts and then like a 3d model drawn and then textured and animated um and that just gets iterated on over and over that that'll be for the main character npcs generally you'll have something like this where it's like three or four concepts it's good to go and then we we go and model it and uh if it's really bad we'll we'll do it again but generally that's enough to to make it work um so what we're gonna do is we're going to break down... I kind of did a, a mesh of the two of them. I really like the... And this is the same thing with 2D as it is with 3D. Um, the silhouette of the first one was a lot clearer, I think. Because um, this the second one was a little more squished. So I took the first one. And also I like that it's um, it's got curls here and curls here and curls here. So it's like repeating motifs of like roundness. Um, so I took more or less the overall silhouette of that. And the eye shape of this seems cuter as well. Um, but I also took the the little um, whiskers from the, the right-hand side one. Um, and I do like the little dangly, glowy bell and the little accessories. So again, this is the same thing. And this is why you always see concept art having multiple iterations. Because a lot of the time you'll take, oh, I like this <coughs> from from concept one. Uh, and I like that from concept two, etc., etc. And we mix and, mix and mash. Um, so generally we would do, this is like a three-quarter. This is a three-quarter top-down view. Was it generally we would do a three quarter either top or, or side view then we would do a front view and a back view and a side view um, so you would have three more alongside so this is like what it looks like um, if you were just randomly looking at it and then you would do directly front directly side directly back um, so i just whacked this out this morning so i didn't put that much work into it i didn't do the other three um, but hopefully that should be it's a simple enough um, asset so hopefully people understand and can convert this into 3D. Um, it gets much more complicated if you're doing like a human character with loads of accessories and detail. Um, then you definitely really, really want like front back sides because you do need to be really clear what you're making. Okay, the other thing from, from doing something like this is you, we can also test different color schemes, which used to be much more important, um, but it's much easier because we're using substance nowadays. Uh, it still helps a lot to have a color scheme laid, locked down, but in, in the old days, like, you know, it was really, you, you had to basically remake the entire Photoshop texture. So testing it beforehand was really important. It's still important, but it's not quite as much. Um, actually, as a, as a general show, do people have a preference, version one, two, three? Uh, hmm. Yeah. I kind of like two. Probably purple. Yeah, yeah, I like the purple. Yeah, purple one. Yeah, purple. Like red. Red. version one, right? The red, the red gives it too I'm much of a warm. A I like that one. That the blue one is nice. Oh, sorry. Which one? Twist. That one's so uh, three is blue. blue. Kind of gives if you put two yeah, is put kind of red. Blue on a black background, it would more kind of blend. It would kind of disappear into the. The red would go well. Or green. Like a. Her, the purple and the red would kind of stand out. I tried green; it didn't work that well. Um, <sighs> I'm I'm torn between blue or purple because the blue gives a better color contrast. So if if you have a look at it, you yeah. sh you should be able to see the differences between you know the fur bits and the the pumpkin a lot easier with the blue. Uh, but I also really like the purple. Um, the reds. I like the purple. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can we can try it because what this is the other. Neon green 
this is the other thing is that um, when we go to to 3D lighting, a lot of times these things change, especially with the materials that we're going to be using. They do kind of change. I have them set on separate layers as well. Green is just awful. Yeah, it doesn't really go well. Can you do a less saturated green? Yeah, give me a sec. It's becoming the green goblin. The green goblin pumpkin. What if in like a Spider-Man comic, Goblin was just like, look at this, and he pulled out a cat of lantern. I don't remember that, but it sounds like the old Goblin. I'd say if you change the color of the pumpkin to orange, that green would actually go well. Oh, uh, with orange, yeah, I, I do. Yeah, no, with, with orange, I think it would work yeah. a lot better. Uh, but obviously, we lose the purple pumpkin. Yeah. I'm kind of I'm kind of married to the purple pumpkin to be honest. But let's see. <laughs> you see, I, I do, like. I do that. really love those colors. I think it suits it perfectly. On. Oh. Can do like different elemental cattle lanterns. That's so nice. <laughs> yeah, this this is pretty good actually. To be fair. Oh yeah, yeah. I prefer that. That was nice. Um, what about the? Well, then I think the bow has to change color. I reckon so. Yeah. yeah. So you can make the bow purple. Try that purple, yeah. <laughs> uh, um. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, purple does work the best, doesn't it? Yeah. Maybe slightly less saturation. Actually, yeah, I really like oh, that. Oh, it's actually Orange. so cute. Yeah, yeah. it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> So like you know this this is important even though we're in two D this is pretty important, um, especially because we do need to know sometimes when you're messing with this you're like oh actually we'll make the stalk a different color or a different material so that is kind of important. Um, remember last um, the last crate we were stacking stuff on top of each other so imagine we did do something like that and we stack stuff on top of each other, um, and then later on we're like oh no they they can't be stacked it has to be a different material so it does cause it, it is important to like prep. No, I really like that actually. That's super good. Like mid -day, um, midnight. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about the purple bow. Let's do a little hue shift again. <laughs> the green kind of works because it looks like leaves, but. Blue bow. Nah. Nah. Um, Black? No. <laughs> give maybe a bit of White. red. A little cat lantern butler. Mm, like no. a different shade of orange, maybe? Yeah, a mixture. Yeah, a little bit of a nice yellowy. Or yeah. Mm. I don't know what do people think. Let me just do a quick undo redo. Like the light. The which? The inner like color. The... Yeah. I can, but the inner color is I suppose it's supposed to be a candle, right? Yeah. Um, okay. What do you want to shift it to? Oh god. Oh my god. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, purple is kind of good. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm imagining oh, blue is good. I like blue too. Oh, a blue glow with what orange. Blue like, like, um, like chartreuse green. Chartreuse green. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I, I, heard that one. I don't know which one I like oh, more. Oh, green wow. really good. <laughs> blue or green. Awesome. I think I like the green. Spirit. He's I'm gonna go. Like, I'm gonna go teal. I'm gonna go like. <laughs> it's just like slowly turning into like the pumpkin from Steven Universe. <laughs> I, I didn't want to say it, but yeah. <laughs> well, that one was a dog. 
Yeah, that's why I went with purple, because like, I kind of had that in mind when I was drawing it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to change the bow color again, because we've changed the glow. Blue does I should get like, a, yeah. like a playable character, and the, the light color represents something, like health. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. starts green, and it goes down to... Okay, that's actually pretty good. Let's just compare it to the start, the original. Buzz, how long does that take you to draw? <laughs> Uh, give me one second. I'm just gonna put the glow here. One second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so looks funny. nicer with the blue. Name. The purple looks nicer with the blue. Sorry, yeah. it does. Yeah, it yeah. does. Blue looks good with anything. Damn it! Now nice I kind of like this one again. We have like no, a I, fire I like one. The, I like this nice one. Like the the bits again. The, bits. the accessories. Yeah. On, no, no. On the purple. On the purple. Yeah. Change like um, the. Stock in the ears. The stock in the ears of what color? Uh, one of the presets. Oh, dark. Yeah, uh, my love. Good at the blue, actually. Yeah. Oh, the blue on purple is. Oh, good. the red looks really nice now. Which looks really nice? The red. The red. Yeah, because the color contrast, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Agreed. <clears throat> All right, we need oh, to make a decision. I, I, still, I, still, I still really green like the orange, orange, green, blue. <laughs> Hang on. Half of us do one, half of us do the other. <laughs> yeah, that's true, actually. We like we need to care about the modeling right now. We can texture it differently. That's true. Yeah. Okay, I can put all these up anyway. Um. So anyway, this is really useful for, for our concepting. Um, I know I know we're kind of in 3D, but like it's good to, to not forget that 2D is still really important for... for planning and concepting. Um, so what I did is I separated out each piece that I thought I would have to make. So the ear is going to be a piece, the accessory is going to be one piece, the stalk, the tail. Uh, I'm going to do one paw and just duplicate it. I might flip the paws here so they're they're mirrored. And then I'll do the, the body. So I'll, I'll do the body today. Um, we probably won't get huge amounts done, but we'll, let's see how far we go. Um, the Is there anything else I need to think about? Yeah, so this one... I'll get the basic shape for it, and then I'll need to make these cutouts. Um, whoever is dragging stuff, and would you mind push the talking or muting? Um, so we're going to try to yeah, carve into it. So I, I also do need to, to pay attention to each of these indents. I'll definitely need like a seam there, obviously, and I'll need a few seams coming out. So let me just draw over this so I'm not just talking. You, you can hopefully understand what I'm saying. Now you don't have to do this, um, and over time you you'll just in your head kind of understand this, but it's like it is a good exercise just to try and figure out like where, um, what I used to do is get students to grab a model from a game they like and try to figure out where the polygons are, and that's super useful. Um, it's you don't really have to do it quite as much anymore these days because people actually do post up their models so you can see the wireframes, but it is very important to try and think before you're making the the shape. Okay, I'll definitely need the eyes to be on their own segment. I'll need these segments, and each of these segments will need their own segments, um, because I'm gonna have to to have these curves, right? So thinking about this now does save a lot of hassle. Um, so hopefully this makes sense. So I'm gonna go into maximum. So I will show you how. Oh no, my UI.
I hate you, Max. Oh, it's okay. I have a, I have one here. Okay, so I will start off with a sphere, I think. Gonna hit F4 so I can see the wireframes. It's actually quite a few segments. It's pretty good. Um, I think my units are set up correctly. Okay, great stuff. Okay. But I'll scale it down later. It's not the worst thing in the world. And I also would like to have this image reference in there, as opposed to just sitting out here and having to swap between them. Uh, now I like this one again. Sick. So I'm going to save a copy of this. And that allows me to close Photoshop, which, like, you know, may be important because of the resource. Yes. Yes. Yeah. How do you change the size of the axis handles? Oh, the handles? Yeah, they're very small on my... Uh, uh, I cannot remember. It's under Gizmo's preferences, apparently. So customize. Uh, preferences, preference settings. Should be under Gizmos. There's Gizmos, and then there's your size. Okay. Thanks. Okay, cool. Um, so where was I? Oh yeah, so let's see how many segments this are. These are 32 segments. I know I want two segments to be beside each other. Um, actually, let me bring in my, my reference first, sorry. So I'm going to make just a plane, and I'm going to use that plane as the reference. Um, I know it was 2048 by 2048, so it was just a square. So it doesn't matter the size I make it, um, as long as it's a square. And then I'll put a material on it. Where has my material screen gone? Okay, so I know some of you are having problems the last time with um, seeing this new material system. So apologies for that. I know why it's happened. Um, I updated to 2021. So in 2021, they've moved away from the old shaders and they're using PBR shaders now, which is great. Um, so they're physical materials, which is the same stuff we're using in Unity. So we can just go to a PBR material and we might as well use the same ones we do in Unity, which is a metal rough. So just clicking here, okay? So if, let's say I'm doing another one. Oh no, it's physical material, don't know what to do. Just change that to PBR Metal Rough because that's the same as we use in Unity. Cool. So I'm going to get my base albedo and that will be a bitmap. I forgot to say one thing as well, um, when you're trying to find which looks good, 
like what we were trying to do, figure out colors. One trick that I've seen people do is like zoom out really far. So you have all your options really, really small. And whichever looks good from far away is generally a better option because it's, uh, it's, it's more striking, I guess, or looks better. So there you, you can see the map there and I can just drag that onto job done. Oh no, let's do the angle 90 degrees. Wrong one. Wrong one again. There we go. Or I could have rotated the thing. Um, and then what I can do is as well is freeze it here. So that's, it's there in the plane. So I can freeze it. There is a issue in general, when you freeze something, it turns gray. But you can change that. So if you right click on it, and I think it is in properties and show frozen in gray, turn that off. So it's frozen, so I can't select it, uh, but I can still see it. So that's great to look at as a reference. So I know I want like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is why the top front and, and back is so important. Is that eight segments? One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think I want eight segments. Um, so this is on 32, which means each segment will have four. One, two, three, four. Does that work? I think that works. Yeah, 32 divided by eight. I think that's okay. So we could go ahead and do that, I think. Um, and I'll add an edit poly onto it. So I've actually not tried this, but we're going to try and do a, yeah, let's try and do that. So I'm going to select intervals of four because I have four. Oops, I missed one. Did I select something? I don't think I did. Okay, I'm on intervals of four, and then I will do a loop. Is that right? Or do I want a ring? I always mix it. Yeah, it's a loop. So a loop will continue selecting. Um, ring will select the other way, like this way, I think. So if I do that, yeah, it'll do. So I want a loop. Cool. And then I also want a soft selection. Let me just drag this out so it's bigger. So basically what I want to do is pull these segments in. I'll scale them in, hopefully. Um, and because it's soft selection, it'll grab the ones close to them and bring them in as well. Let's see if this works. Yay. Uh, and now here's where we look at it and we're like, should we make the segments thicker? I think they're okay, because when I squash this, it's going to be pretty cute. I'm not going to squash it this way. Um, I'm going to show you a different thing, because I want to have pretty good control. The other thing is, because it's cutesy, I kind of want it to be asymmetric, because I feel that's part of the charm. Like I, I quite like the first one, because it's asymmetric. It kind of looks like it's a, almost like a, I'm going to offend Serena. It's, it's not meant to be offense, but like, you know, the way... When a kid draws something, it's kind of cute because it's asymmetric. And it's the same thing when you see something that's a little asymmetric. It's not perfect. So that adds to part of its charm. So I'm going to do something called a FFD. And this is where we start getting into um, things, these modifiers that a lot of other software don't have. So this is a cylinder FFD. All right. And what an FFD does, let me show you a box one first. Okay, the professor has said they're not offended. That's good. Okay, so if you 
open up FFD, you get a control point. You can select these control points, and what they allow you to do is I can basically warp them, and you can kind of see it's it's dragging everything away. The more control points I have, the more control I have over it, but then the more I have to deal with. So what I want to do in this case is I want a cylinder one, making sure no selection is on. And you can set the number of points, so if you want more or less. Um, I actually think this is pretty good, so... So if we look at a pumpkin, if I look at an actual pumpkin. So this is like a pretty good, um, so we see, first of all, there it's asymmetric. It's got, don't worry about the little details and all that stuff. We're going to do that in texture, um, but it's asymmetric and it's squished in on the top. Like it's kind of like almost as if someone punched down a, a puff ball and, and squished it here and it'll be the same on the bottom. So that's the first thing I want to do. And I also want to add a little bit of irregularity. They all often have like a slant as well. You can kind of see they're not like perfectly straight, I guess, if you look at them side on. Um, this one is pretty straight, but a lot of them will have like a slant. And again, that'll be nice for the cutesy nature of this. So let us look at this from the top. And it's a little annoying. You need to open and click control points, but then you can manipulate let me change the number of points again so let me give me give me two here but then on the side on the height i want less okay i think that works much better and the, oops i accidentally selected one here I'll do the same on the bottom. And we're starting to get that cute squash pumpkin shape. And this is where I want to do that irregularity that I talked about. So do the stuff that you want to have symmetrical first, but now I'm going to make it a little asymmetric here. Maybe grab a few of these and move them around. Cool, so that's a pretty cute looking pumpkin. Um, now it's slightly blockish, blocky-ish. So if I do a little render. Sorry, it's rendering in the wrong. That's actually, actually not too bad when we have a look at it. It's actually perfectly fine. Um, oh no, sorry, hit render again. Um, this is shift Q by the way, this shortcut will render. Okay, so that's pretty good, but just in case um, you do want more polygons, if you think it's not smooth enough, you can do something called a turbo smooth. I'll do that at the end. I want to cut my eyes and the, the mouth in there first, because um, those are pretty important. But you can do a turbo smooth. Um, type T, turbo smooth. And you can see that it's, um, it's added more polygons, so it'll be even smoother now. If I add more iterations, it'll get smoother again. But then obviously, if I hit seven, you'll see the poly count. I'm now on like 15,000 polys just for a silly cat and lantern, whereas I was on 500. All right, so they because they, they kind of like cube, they get, um, it, you, you get really high polygon counts really fast if you're not careful. Um, so I kind of want to make sure that I have everything carved in and all the shapes done before I move on. Now, actually, I do have a stylistic question here for the team. Do we want to cut these so they're actually like we actually see inside it or do we want to just do like an inset? So it's like just a little beveled eye in there. What do we want to do? Well, polygons are like one sided, isn't that right? Yes, but we can do something called a shell. So we cut it in. We can do a shell and that will like um, basically fill the inside of it. It, it, oh, okay. it, 
more than doubles the poly count, which again is not a big deal. Uh, I, I'm way more paranoid about poly counts than most people would be nowadays, uh, just because right. I'm, I'm, I came from a low poly background. So it, we're not too worried about that. It's just more a stylistic choice, to be honest. I think it would look cooler if it was like actually you could see into it. That's okay. just me. It's, oh shit. How good can we get the lighting effects like the Yeah, no. I so that's a good question. Um we can do it pretty well in um in what you may call it in Unity and <laughs> also in Sketchfab where we're gonna have this as our portfolio pieces. Um we can do it pretty well. So I wouldn't worry uh -huh. about technical aspects. I think we're okay with that. Cool. Okay, so yeah. let's cut it in. Um, so I know I want these two. I know they're on two segments. I probably want to pick the best, cutest ones. I think three would be too wide. If I have it like one eye here, one eye here, that's too wide. So let me just rotate this and see which one is. Like these two, maybe? One eye here, one eye here. Yeah, we'll do that, but I want to spread these two out a bit as well. I want them a little further, because like, um, white set eyes are kind of um, known for, I guess, cuteness. So let's do a little, let's do another FFD on this. And the different types of FFDs are just like the different control points. So I'll grab this area and white set offset it a little bit not much so this stuff is kind of slow but um getting the silhouette right at this point makes it a lot easier later um can really go back and fix this. Um, where are, are we over time? No, we're not. We have until five, right? So we're good. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So I'm going to cut an eye here, cut an eye there, and then I'll do, I'll worry about the mouth when I do that. So let's cut the eyes for it. I'm just thinking in my head, how do I do this? Okay, I could just connect these two and like do a giant triangle. I don't know if that eye is too big to if I do that. Yeah, no, I think that's the right size. So I will do something called a cut. You gotta be really careful with this tool. Um, so whenever I'm hovering over an edge, you see it does that. It's going to add a vertex on this edge. Let's see if I do that. You see that? So it's added vertices. So you got to be careful. If I want to cut from a vertex to another vertex, I need to make sure it turns into that little crosshair. Um, if I, it goes to the line, it means I'm actually adding another line. Um, and then you may lose track of your polys. You may make um, a n-gon where you actually wanted a, a quad. So there we go. So that's one eye. And then, and I'll worry about quadding it up now in a second. But let me just get the eyes right first. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I might as well delete. Um, sorry, my computer's running a little weird, so apologies if it's going. And I can take this um, at this time to like scale these up. Actually, let me scale them a teeny bit. Cool. Well, let's delete that. I kind of want to round it as well, so I don't want them to be perfectly straight, so I'm going to round that a little bit here, like so. Um, and I'm 
think I don't want to have these sharp edges. Mm, yeah, I don't think I do. So I'm going to try and s chamfer these and see if that works. So I can chamfer. Oh no. Okay, so it's set on a weird default. I'm going to turn on the settings. Okay, it was doing two of these. I just want none. Cool, um, and then I'll clean this up now. Um, that's kind of annoying the way it does that. So I can just grab these and collapse them so they'll shove into one. That way I've, I've now made them mostly quads, except for this dude. Should have done it that way. Collapse them all into trees. Are people following along or just watching? Uh, trying to follow along. I, I can only watch right now because I'm too far behind. The so problem happened. Same. Right? Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll slow down a little. Sorry about that. No point on slowing down just for me, though, because I'm far too behind. I can't. I don't keep think up you're anymore. the only one, to be honest. All right. Oh, this is a great example. Um, I don't know if you can see. You see the way it's kind of weird looking here? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's because this this fella here is actually an N-Gon and has one vertex just pushed up. So it's it's kind of been, if you can see it from the side, there you go. It's been Oh, it's got a bit of a raised. Yeah, exactly. So this is another reason why um, you try not to do N-Gons. So I can connect this, and this should turn that to quad, and that's nice <laughs> and lovely. I think I've made them too white set. Let's 
going to do a soft selection and move one of the eyes closer. Should they be a bit more up? Possibly, yeah. So hopefully I can... Should they? Yeah, why not? Let's move them. Blah, blah, blah. No, rotate them so they fit. Cool. All right, now let's do the nose. Okay, so I want like a little upside down triangle here. So it should be somewhere, yeah, somewhere, not too low, kind of <coughs> in the middle here. So let's see if I can chamfer here and bring it down. Oh, turn off my soft selection. I think I need to cross this and, and make a vertex here as well. I do presume there's a way, um, now that you've hollowed out the pumpkin, that there's a way to make the middle between the inside and the outside thicker, so it makes it look like it's not just a thin layer of wall between the outside and the inside. Nah, we're done. Can't do anything. Oh. Else. Okay, so we're keeping it as that. No, okay. no, no. I don't know if you remember, but I was saying something about a shell. So you can use a shell. Hmm. Uh, but we'll do that at the end. So I want to, I want to get all the all the cutouts in, um, in the right place, and I want the silhouette in the right place, and then I'll do a shell on it, um, and that way it'll it'll fill in the inside, if that makes sense. Ah. Oh, so cute. Okay, so that's... Oh my god, it's a dual to frickin'. Oh, tiny baby nose. Oh, I was tempted just to make the so tiny. the whiskers sticky. To out. just be floating. Yeah, it'd be a lot easier. I'm still getting yeah, that, would be easy. that could be nice. Like little float and glowy bits. Floaty glowy bits. I mean it's already got a floating glowy thing around the bell thing at the stock. It does, yeah. Okay, cool. And then we will do this little mouth here. Sure to give him his fangs. Yeah, let me just move this. This is pretty cute though, isn't it? Okay, so I think I'm going to start from here, but I won't pull these down. I think I'm going to cut the shape of it and then I'll, I'll quad everything later so where is my cut it is here
Okay, I think something went wrong with the cut here. I'm not sure what's happening here. I'm just going to change that to vertices just to see what's happening. Um, maybe this will be fixed when I quad it. I think it's just a quadding problem. I hope. But let's get rid of the polygons first. Oh, save. Mm, should it be a bigger grin on this side? And the uh, yeah, kind of comes to the edge of his eyes. Yeah, because it goes in. Yeah, it's the edge on this one. It doesn't go on the edge on this one. Okay, let's cut it out again. Damn it. Uh, and hopefully that will fix the problem with the tooth. I mean, who knows, it might. Oh, he's got a little bit of a snaggle tooth. Wait, what? Why isn't it? No! Okay. I set this up already, but I guess it turned itself off. I did tell you about the uh, undo levels, didn't I? Could undo I preferences. Yeah, yes, I, I have to set it. that. I have to set that every time I open it. It doesn't save? That's super annoying. Should say. Oh, oh yeah, it's on twenty. Dang. Yeah, it doesn't that's stupid. Me. It used to save. It might be a bug. Mine's still on five hundred. Yeah, I don't know. It might be something with my. I'll just delete them by hand. Come on, come on, hurry up. Hmm. Uh, my computer's being super not friendly right now. Oh, great. I can't select them. Okay, cool. Um, so here's it. Oh, it looks like it cut a line there. That's maybe why it's doing that. Here's the thing to to know: um, when you delete this, don't hit just delete because it'll do that, and don't just hit backspace because it will leave the vertices there. Oh no, it doesn't anymore. Um, so you used to have to hit Control backspace, but it looks like backspace works just fine. That's great, uh, but don't just delete it because it'll cut a hole. Cool, not too bad. You can kind of see where it's going. Baby. Uh, now I need to make sure that... Hey, I... it picks the tooth. What? It picks the tooth. Oh, I deleted that hole. 
Well, still, that problem is fixed. <laughs> uh, yeah, now I just need to quad everything up. Try and keep your quads um, big. Try not to have stretch polygons, so like super skinny ones. You, tr well, you don't really want those. They don't really work um, that well, especially when we go to animate. Animate? Uh, in the future, uh, when okay. we're rigging, <laughs> it is it is important to know that though. Have I missed anything that's not a try or a quad? I think I've got it. There's like a stretch here. I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay, it's not the worst in the render. Okay, so oh, I thought we were done. Need to do the whiskers. <laughs> whiskers. So they are in a completely aren't those different gonna be, segment. You, you, yeah, you aren't, those, aren't those going to be floating though? I mean, it's if we're out. lazy, yeah. But like, are we going to be lazy or do you want to do it? It's, it's not easier to put them into it. No, it's way easier for me to make like a triangle and just shove it in there. Just delete to make sure they look okay. You can right click to stop cutting, by the way. Yeah, that looks good. Alright, I'll quad them up now in a second. Let me just cut the others first. Oh, how cute. Okay, now to quad them all up. That's adorable. Actually, it's pretty cute, isn't it? So, like, a good, a good like, basis, a good concept. Like, it's much easier to model based off that. Um, I, I know I'm not looking that much at the reference, but I am, um, I am referencing it every so often. You can't see my eyes, obviously. So what's that um, connecting thing you're doing? Uh, it's Is just I'm connecting. Making I'm making them quads. Okay. Sorry, did I not explain this? Um, so basically, if I select two vertices... ...and then hit connect, it'll draw a line, it'll, it'll draw an edge between them. So you can either hit connect... Uh, where is it? Here. Or you can also right-click... Um, it's being really weird for me right now. I think it's because I'm using push to talk. And then that'll just do the connect as well. Okay. But is that not making more uh, triangles? It is making more... I'm trying to keep them as quads as if I can. Uh, but yeah. tries of quads are fine. Um, the, the major thing is I don't want an end gone. And uh, if I didn't connect it, this one is an end gone. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five edges. So, um, that's why I was having some issues here, I think. And then when I quoted them, uh, the rendering was fine. Oh, here, yeah. whatever it was.
Oh, why is this one not connecting? Oh, weird. No, what the f- Why is this one not connecting? That's kind of annoying. I think there is a line there. I just think, don't think it's... You think? No. No. I'll just cut it. I'm not sure what's going on there. That last one didn't connect either. Yeah, I don't know what's up. Um, to be honest, this stuff, like, sometimes you get away with not doing this because um, something like Unity will try everything anyway. Yeah. But it just may not try it the way you want it to. Yeah, this one's not doing it either. <clears throat> oh, did. Okay, maybe I missed. Okay. Is that all the cutouts I have to do? Okay, I think so. Let's do eyebrows. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so just the last double check render. Yeah. Oh, it's all squashed. <laughs> I think once you, if you once you give them like the, the little headstock thing, it'll really come together. Oh uh, yeah, I think yeah, so. I, I don't know if I want to stretch. Is that better? Oh, that's Let's... nice. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. He's a bit more, yeah. a bit more rounded. Okay. Um. Now the question is, I actually don't know which I want to do first. So I don't know if I want to shell first or I want to turbo smooth first. I think. Let me try and turbo smooth. See what happens. Oh. Ooh. The whiskers. That looks good. Except for the whiskers. The whiskers are gone. Like, the mm -hmm. eyes and the mouth are good, but the whiskers are kind of eh. Can you add different parts of the mesh onto different layers so it doesn't smooth everything? Oh, yeah, they're a bit you like can diamond select. Yeah, they are. But, like, I mean, I guess I could I could expand them, I guess. Um, I'm just trying to render and see if they are. If they do look that bad, they may actually not look that bad. Yeah. Look like knife cuts. Um, let me see what happens if I shell it first. So this is a shell. Um, this one's pushing out. I actually wanted to push in because I know my out looks good. What's my thickness? Let me go a bit thicker. So. You need to be careful because sometimes um, when you shell, especially when you have cutouts like this, they merge into each other. If you, like if I put too much, you should be able to see that. Can you see that? Like this is the back polygon out of this cut. So you have to be careful. So like this works pretty well. Okay. I think that's good. Then if we turbo smooth that, what happens? That's kind of eerie. Yeah, it's too liquid looking, I think. Like, if I was going it's for a certain look, to maybe. It's yeah. sentient. So I think I will... It's looking a lot more... Sorry. Go on. I, I'd say it's looking oh, a lot more like a... Off. A lot more like a, a... 
uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. See, the one with the sharper edges looks better. It's more like... The sharper edges look better, but that one like, looks like... I don't even know Christmas. if I want a turbo smooth. I don't think a turbo smooth suits. It looks more like a skull if a turbo smooth. Yeah, let's leave off the turbo smooth. Boop. Bye bye. I think like the turbo smooth like looks good for like the surface of the pumpkin, but like the smoothing. yeah, the cutouts. Like if you could like resharpen them. I think isn't there like a way to like reduce like poly count, like after you turbo smooth? Uh, not that one because that's only one iteration. But I would I would probably do what I did on these. You see the way I split those, so I'll probably do that, and that may help it to um to keep its shape. So again, this this is why I th personally think Max is great for this type of modeling. I can just turn this off and go back down to my edit poly, and I'll do it here, um, and it, it'll reapply on the shell. Actually, let me do it above. Uh, what do I want to do here? Do I want to... Am I chamfering these? I can't remember. I think I am. Yeah, I am. Just not that much. Okay. Let me just select all of them and just do them all at one. This is, by the way, really complicated for your third class. Um, so y'all should uh, should feel proud of Let's yourselves. Let's thank our new professor for that. Thank you, Serena. I just <laughs> mean believe you know the, the warning words of Baz from last week were, be careful now. The more difficult you draw, the more difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I and I want I wanted to go with caramel apple. <laughs> okay, okay that's so now one. I will control. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think that's okay. Oh, I need to quad everything again. Oh, God damn it. So there we go. That's what control backspace is for. If I just backspace, it leaves those vertices there. Or if I control backspace, it gets rid of them as well. Thank you. 
Oh boy. How fun is this? Oh, this brings me back to the old days. We all picked what? You guys voted on the lantern, I just drew it. Yeah, you drew it. Don't hate the player, man. Gotta take some responsibility now. I hold no responsibility for the pain caused in the making of Cattle Lantern. Oh, this brings me back to the good old days of crying. You don't cry anymore? Eh. I was, I was a meh. <laughs> It'll come back to you. I'm just curious. I'm going to try and turbo smooth and see what happens. Let's separate by smoothing groups. Okay, it's better some issues here. I'll have to tweak that one. Yeah, overall, okay. But I kind of like it without turbo smooth. Probably should have given it more segments here because uh, there's a lot of rendering issues. I'm hoping the textures will hide it, but um, I do have a lot of stretch polys because I don't have enough segments to take them up. Is that why the lighting's a little bit off? Yeah, yeah, it is. Because I'm adding all these little tries and stuff as well. Um, again, that's why it's way easier just to, like, I, I need, I'll need to go in and fix
fix all of this basically but slowly one by one effort so do you want us to make this for next week then oh wow we've only 10 minutes class left uh yeah if you can get to this point and then we'll move on to the rest should be a lot easier i want to say like ideally actually this should have a segment all the way up ideally to here they're moving down oh well uh yeah the rest should be a lot easier let's see if i can do just a bow tie and finish up on the bow tie um i won't cut a hole into it i'll have to use this textures I should have showed this to my mom, actually. She would have loved to have actually made a cat a lantern in real life. She still can. That's not Halloween time yet. Your mom knows how to sure, give life to pumpkins. Too many kids out the way things are now, you know? I'll try to be a couple, though. Why does your mom know how to give life to pumpkins? Okay, I'm going to do a box. Magic. I'm going to do a spherify on that. Gives me a little sphere, and that way I should be able to get like three little nubbins extruded out from here. One, two, three. That'll work. Yeah, that'll work. I'll smooth them later. What's the key to get your menu back on the right side of the screen? It's a six left side of the screen. Uh, this menu? Yeah, it's like... Jesus, it's just gone. It's just, it's just a full, like, render. Um, it is in the Windows, I think. I think it's... I don't even know what this window's called. Command panel. I look more or less like a cutesy skull. Yeah, or it could be a cute jellyfish. A cartoonized pirate would be proud of it. Okay, and then just a bow tie. I just need to do one side and we'll copy it and attach them together. I will use a box, I think. I'll do is verify again, but I won't verify it fully. And I think I'll do an FFD in that.
first year's oh dream. God. It's the first year flood. Batten down the hatches. Time to start the wave, <laughs> Serena. They're here. Don't be mean right. to them. Ward. Okay. Here. That's one of them. You were once them. I don't see the first. Where are you, bro? Possible. Where, where, where is thou seeing the first? My yeah. brother. My brother. Everybody's got to do the wave. Short show. Not too many waves, guys. We almost got banned for that last year. Wait, what are you too all crazy. doing this? What are you all doing this? I'm going to do a copy flip now, which is an important move. So shift drag to copy it. Yeah, I'll do a copy and I'll just do a little flippy here. Mirror and then you can choose how you want to mirror it. Um, in this case, I'm going to mirror Y and you can also make a copy to mirror it as a copy um, or you can just do no clone. I should have just copied the other one. The crazy spending your first year of college on Discord. They only said that Better than spending your first year in college in Bongo. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I am confused in how everyone else is years. How everyone else is dealing with first years. No, how everyone else is seeing the first years in Discord. In the general chat. Yeah. See them oh. all joining. Where, where else would they be? No, it's just because for some reason all I have is. Oh, yeah. No, no. No. no nothing too exciting. On I must have gotten some sort of random setting that only allows me. Okay, anyway. Um, anyway, let me start. expand this. Me of you should send that into a general. I got a good little chuckle out of it. I, I what, didn't want to be mean to the first years, like to their face, you know? <laughs> it's not to their face, though. This is all being recorded. <laughs> I don't oh, think yeah. it picks <laughs> up on us. It doesn't pick up on us. It just sounds like it you're It does always now. I did desktop audio as <laughs> so. Uh, oh, no. Yeah. Just, Maybe not. Uh, Maybe it's just me really talking. Proof. First one. It was just by uh, The second one was just us. Is there any uh, way of getting a breakdown of like how many quads and tries you have? Yes, yeah, so if I hit seven, it'll show me. I have 1,434. I can also oh, cool. change that if I go to customize. Where is it again? It is, is it preferences? Viewports, and then I want to show where is it? Where is it in statistics? I honestly can't remember. Uh, I should be able to show. Oh, I remember. Year. Viewport settings. There we go. Statistics. And I want to do total plus selection. Okay. Uh -huh. That way I can select something and it'll show me the poly count for that. So that sphere is giving me 1,200. And this one should be, yeah, 200, just for this. So um, I'd say we leave it there for today. We're actually pretty far along. 
those were the two most complex ones. Um, aside from this, we just had the little ears to make. The tail and the... Okay. Oh. Dude, was it <laughs> Your mic is going So like all, all the little the bits. All the other little bits. Um, this little glowy ball, it'll just be literally just a small little uh, sphere. Um, we can do like little planes to simulate that kind of like um, gassy aura, but let's see how far we get. Cool. Any questions? Great stuff. Right. Serena, how long have you used an ambient earth sky moon? <laughs> what? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs>